Hello and welcome. In today's video we're going to be taking a look at a tiny quadcopter. It's the Isheen E010. Comes in two very fetching colours. Super fast green or super sexy red. The model that I happen to have is the green one because that just happens to be what was available. On the box we have a picture of the green one, we have a picture of the red one. We have some random bits of information on the side, made in China, um, the branding on, on this side, and then a little bit of information on this side, 2.4 gigahertz, E version, 360 degree, whatever that means, LED light, six axis gyro, CF mode, one press automatic return, high and low speed switch. So we'll get into those as we look further into it. So we'll pop it out of the box. And we've got a very nicely packaged moulded case. We have a set of spare propellers for. We have instructions in Chinese and in English, which can be a little confusing. We have the quadcopter itself in its very fetching shade of super fast green, and the quadcopter battery which slots into the little cradle underneath and fits onto the little plug just behind it, like so. Underneath this, we have a charging cable for the quadcopter battery, USB cable with a plug. And underneath this, we have the controller, which takes two AA batteries. So um, that's quite refreshing because lots of very small radio control devices tend to take a 9 volt battery. So I'm going to clear all this away and then we'll have a closer look at the quadcopter and controller. So the quadcopter itself, as you can see, is very tiny. Um, however, there are smaller ones. But as I've found with radio control vehicles over the years, the larger a vehicle is, especially a flying vehicle, the easier it is to control. I think this is a good balance of compact and rugged. And some of the smaller ones I've found can be very, very, very fidgety in flight in hover um, the spaceship style cabin pops off a couple of pins there so you can see the control board underneath a uh, very small control board all the components on there and you've got these uh, these propellers inside a sort of a ducted fan design which is great for beginnings because when you bump it against things which you inevitably will it means you're less likely to damage or snap a propeller although you do have your replacements of course. The battery sits in the little moulded tray underneath there as you can see and the clip for the battery sits under here. The one problem I've found with this so far is with this clip fully inserted so that it snaps into the two little retaining pins up at the top it can be really really fiddly to remove and I've found that in wiggling it to remove, um, it, it's sort of so worryingly tight, I, uh, I've been concerned that it might snap off the connector on the board. So what I do tend to do now is push it in far enough that it makes good contact, but not quite so it clips into the two little pins. And provided you don't have any major impacts, that's not going anywhere in a hurry. It's not going to pop out on you. The housings for the four motors also form the feet for your quadcopter to land on and then the controller is a simple device resembling a sort of Sega type joystick thing you've got uh, two buttons at the top you've got some rocker switches down here the on off switch here throttle left this is mode 2 for anybody who is not familiar with radio controlled uh, flying vehicles throttle left is is referred to as mode two throttle right is mode one throttle um, mode two is common in the uk and uh, and mode one i believe was very common in the us although i believe now most devices come with mode two flight controller um, obviously your flashier flight controllers can be configured to mode one or mode two depending on how you wish to fly on your left stick you have throttle up and down and you'll notice that that one unlike the other isn't spring loaded this one the up and down is positionable and wherever you let go of it is where it will stay as you can see left to right however which controls 
this direction of the quadcopter will return to your central position. On the left hand side you've got forward pitch, rearward pitch, left pitch and right pitch accordingly and that will automatically spring back into the central position. These rocker buttons here are your trim buttons. If you're in a hover and the device is floating this way you would trim it out to the left until it's stable. If it's floating that way you would trim it out to the right until it's stable. If it's floating forward you would trim it back until stable and if it's floating backwards you would trim it forward until stable. This one here that looks like a trim button isn't a trim button. It's a, uh, a headless mode, the lower one. And what headless mode means is you have orientation problems with flying devices in the sense that when you're flying, if you turn the device around to face you and push forward, it's then going to come towards you instead of going away from you. And if you pull back, it's going to go away from you instead of coming towards you as it would in this orientation and similarly left and right will go the opposite ways to the way that you expect them to when the, when the flying machine is facing away from you. Headless mode changes this so that if you rotate and it's facing towards you the controls will still work in the normal configuration. It's potentially a very useful thing for beginner flyers but also a very dangerous thing to get used to I think because it just makes you lazy. You really need to work on flying with these machines and getting used to orientation and the way that this used to be done with uh, radio control aeroplanes used to be a case of you would take off sideways on and then you would practice figure eights to get used to the orientation and the same thing can be done with a quadcopter uh, and likewise with radio control helicopters and the other rocker switch up here is your return to home mode now when I tried this I expected it to sort of gently drift back to the takeoff position and sit there in a hover uh, what it actually does is it comes belting back at you at a frightening speed in your general direction and doesn't seem to stop until you retake control by nudging the direction control stick on your right here um, so bear that one in mind up here you have your rate control one beep two beeps for dual rate controls and up here is your stunt button uh, you, this controls your flips so press it once and then push left and the quadcopter will do a full flip left um, and likewise full flip right if you push right forward and back so you press it once flip press it again flip and however many of those you want to do and then of course down here you've got the power switch we're just going to take a quick look at the weight of the uh, e-sheen using these gram scales just here and the quadcopter itself minus the canopy weighs in at 20.5 grams the canopy itself is one gram so even though it's not a great deal in the grand scheme of things you know you're talking the difference between 20.5 and 21.5 grams which could make a big difference in flight times and by that I mean seconds and seconds when you're flying and having fun with your quadcopter can make a big difference so for those who aren't too worried about having to protect the sort of quite delicate looking circuit board when you're fairly confident in your flight ability what you can do is take the canopy off and uh, and fly it without to gain those extra few seconds the battery supplied with the Yishin E010 quadcopter is this very small 3.7 volt 150 milliamp power battery and charges using the supplied USB adapter and appropriate charging plug. Plug the adapter into a powered USB port and you'll see the red light illuminates. Plug in the battery which can only fit one way
and you'll note that the red light on the USB stick extinguishes. This will relight when the battery is fully charged and a full charge takes approximately 30 minutes. So what we're going to do at this point is get this uh, quadcopter ready for its first flight. So the first thing we need to do is plug in the battery underneath, remembering not to plug it in so, to, so far that it clips in, but it's still a nice firm grip. Uh, that's optional, of course, it's entirely up to you. You'll notice the LEDs flash now. At this point, switch on the transmitter, and the power light should flash on the transmitter. Throttle fully up, fully back down, and this will bind the quadcopter to the transmitter. Now I'm going to redo this while it's actually sat on a, a flat surface. Let's just angle this down a little bit so you can see it just at the bottom of the frame there, and we'll pair that on like so. And then, taking the right stick controller, push down and left until you see the LEDs flash, and this will calibrate all the electronics in the thing so that it should fly quite even. So next step is just to throttle up nice and smooth and evenly and the uh, the key thing here with this and with any quadcopter with any flying device is nice gentle movements on the controls. Aggressive movements it will just have it hurtling all over the place. So we're about half throttle. And it's still rising a little. Trying to get a balance where it will actually maintain a hover. And we've got a slight rightward drift. So we use a little bit of leftward trim. And I think it may be drifting backwards very, very slightly. So we'll just give it one bit of forward trim but on the whole that's nice and stable and even so I'm just going to demonstrate one of the flips so top right button and then flip right there and I'm going to do a leftward flip same thing let's get the drone so that you can actually see it the drone the quad cop so you can see it Move this up a little for you. So that's uh, an interesting little thing there. That's uh, I was essentially at that point. That was a hands-off hover, as you can see, and the quadcopter's just behaving itself quite nicely. My cat Gizmo doesn't quite know what to think of this, um, although. It's not freaking her out, but thankfully she's getting a little bit too old to chase these things. Otherwise she'd have probably had that out of the air by now. So we're going to go for a leftward flip. So top right button, left on the controller. There you go. Now you can see it loses quite a, quite a lot of altitude when you do the flip. So you do need a reasonable amount of altitude. And what we're doing essentially... And this is what anybody who will be starting with uh, with the quadcopters or flying any flying devices will be doing is practicing your hover because getting a nice stable hover is the awkward the awkward bit thankfully because of the flash electronics in all the modern ones it makes life a lot easier but as um, as i found out years ago when i flew radio controlled airplanes and helicopters the larger the aeroplane or helicopter, the larger the device, the more stable it is in hover and in flight. And the same applies to these tiny quadcopters. The smaller it is, the twitchier it is and the less stable it is because it's, it's lighter. So the heavier it is in the air, the more stable it becomes which sounds counterintuitive for uh, for something that's that has to be light enough obviously to fly as I'm sure you can imagine but as you can see this is a very well behaved quadcopter it's the first quadcopter I've ever had 
Uh, I have flown a very, very tiny one which belonged to my son. And that was uh, tricky to, to get in a stable hover. And um, the first sort of few things you really just going to be focused on uh, on on maintaining the hover a good hover and possibly harassing your cats it's a nice hot day though so let's give it a bit of oh sorry baby oh but preferably not attacking them like that In use in a hover you will get somewhere around I've found about five minutes and 20 seconds of flight time as it nears the end of its battery life the LEDs will begin to flash which they're doing just now whether you can see that or not I don't know and as the battery dies completely it will drop to the floor like so and eventually just stop. Now you can see the throttle is on full there but the props have stopped because that means the battery is flat. So in conclusion is the Ishin E010 worth it? I would say an astounding yes. It's a great easy to fly quadcopter for a beginner speaking as somebody who's a relative beginner to quadcopters it's much much less twitchy than the really really tiny ones which are great fun but you've got a bit more controllability it's well built it behaves well it reacts well to the controller it's it's got this great ducted fan design to protect the propeller blades and so far I've, uh, I've managed to hit it on the ceiling and various walls and numerous other things with no damage whatsoever to the propellers which is a great thing and something that's hard to avoid with, uh, with the other ones with the open propeller blades. So for the cost and for what's in the packaging it's, it's fantastic. The instructions are a little bit iffy um, but anybody who's had Chinese built toys with instructions in English will know that that can sometimes be the case. It doesn't take much figuring out. They're not as bad as some instructions I've had before. Uh, it's definitely well worthwhile. And uh, the only thing I would say is you might want to buy yourself another one or two spare batteries so you can have one charging while you're flying on one because the thing is so addictive that the minute that your five, five or so minutes of fly time is up, you want to plug the battery back in and go again, but you have to wait half an hour for it to charge up. So it's a shame the battery doesn't charge a little more quickly, but obviously there has to be a compromise there between safety and how quickly a battery can charge and, and hold its 100% charge capacity. So yes, absolutely if you're thinking about getting a quadcopter go out and get one of these uh, pick your favorite color between the green and the red uh, but as far as i know that they are the only two colors available but uh, that doesn't really matter you can modify these as well if you look around on youtube and uh, and google generally you will see people who have modified to fit a wi-fi adapted uh, camera onto the top of the board as far as I'm aware, it's quite a simple modification and adds a fun little aspect if you want to do fly arounds uh, with uh, an FPV setup or if you just want to play around with onboard video. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Give us a, a thumbs up if you liked it. Don't forget to subscribe and check my channel for other content. Thank you for watching.